wall to wall. Millions of dollars worth of solar panels on its way into the U.S. and all stopped in its tracks. An overwhelming amount of cargo. Over here, a load of xanthan gum. It's a 40-foot container full. The food additive used in toothpaste and ice cream, now in lockdown. This is a top priority for CPP and for the department. And on this side of the warehouse, boxes and boxes of vinyl floor tiles halted. This is not just a supply chain security issue for us, it is an economic security issue for the country. Right now we're in a warehouse where we conduct examinations. Our cameras got exclusive access to Customs and Border Protection's battle to stop products produced with slave labor. We're probably holding somewhere in the vicinity of 200 or so full container loads of this commodity, about $15 million. All of it shipped to the Port of New York, Newark, and all of it detained. The team here at the port enforcing the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, ensuring goods made with forced labor in the Xinjiang region of China do not enter the United States. This is modern day slavery. American companies now forced to deal with the consequences of a tainted supply chain. It is challenging, especially when your supply chains go into China. Anne-Marie Highsmith oversees trade at CBP headquarters in Washington, D.C., making the issue even more challenging for American companies. The Chinese government has taken affirmative steps to obfuscate those supply chains and prevent businesses from learning uh, the conditions under which those products are manufactured. So if you're going into, into China, you have an extra layer of risk to work against. Her message to American businesses. You need to know your supply chain. During our visit at the port, 916 40-foot shipping containers filled with merchandise were under investigation. That represents about $60 million. And since late June 2022, nearly a billion dollars worth of goods halted at the port. Topping the list, electronics, apparel, footwear, and textiles. Like this bedding. What makes you think that this has ties to forced labor? The cotton commodity coming out of the Xinjiang region has typically been uh, tied to forced labor. So how does CBP track merchandise back to the region? It's a combination of intelligence, information that's gathered from a variety of sources, all feeding into our expert cargo targeting systems. In some cases, he says, goods are sent out to a lab for more tests. <laughs> We followed these t-shirts made by a major fashion brand to a lab in Newark, New Jersey. First, a scientist cut samples of the shirts. So that's what cotton will normally look like. Then examines the fibers under a microscope to see if it's made from cotton. That would be cotton. Next, the shirts go out to a private lab overseas for isotope analysis. That can determine if the cotton was grown in the Xinjiang region. We have to really drill down into the chemical makeup of cotton, and it creates a kind of a fingerprint for that particular region. CBP's senior science officer, Stephen Casada. You can actually get the fingerprint down to the fact that it comes from one side of a river versus the other side of a river. And back here to the port, we can't reveal any of the corporate names we saw detained. That info is protected by the Trade Secret Act, which says disclosing it could impact CBP's ability to enforce the law, as well as the company's reputation. All of the manufacturers we saw have been hit with detention notices, like this. They have 30 days to come back to us and prove to us that these were produced without forced labor. Out of more than 3,000 shipments detained since last summer, about one-third has been released to date. How many manufacturers provide a clear list of the entire supply chain down to the very first supplier for you guys? Very, very, very few. While a company works to prove it's not in violation of the new law, it's faced with another cost, storage fees. This is one of 80 warehouses that are bonded to store high-risk cargo. Customs gave CNBC cameras exclusive access to one of the warehouses, but asked us not to reveal its exact location. In this warehouse, about $20 million worth of solar panels being detained by CBP because of suspected ties to forced labor. Solar panels are a big issue. The polysilicon is sourced out of the uh, Xinjiang region. So what happens to this stuff after 30 days? 
they were either going to have to destroy it and lose the total value of the cargo, or they're going to re-export it and incur additional fees for re-exporting. I've spoken to executives, CFOs, CEOs, and also their investors and their boards because they're concerned about this. Angela Santos is an attorney dealing with forced labor issues every day. Her clients, public and private companies in the solar, fashion, energy, and automotive industries. They've received detentions. They just don't know if their supply chain includes goods produced with forced labor. And she says now coming to her for help navigating a law with limited information. When goods are detained, unfortunately, at this point, a company will not know what the problematic material or level is. It's very, very difficult for companies. 